in today's discussion we are going to see what are the types of trusses okay the division the diversification in type of truss is made upon whether the truss is a perfect truss or whether the truss is an imperfect truss see the truss is called as perfect or imperfect based on a very simple mathematical expression a simple equation and the equation is nothing but m is equal to 2j minus r or if we simplify this if we say that number of reactions affects fy and m are there then the number of reactions we always end up with are three that's why the equation can be stated as m equal to 2j minus 3 now let's try to understand what this m j and r stand for are we as uh, already as we have seen is uh, number of reactions then m is number of members in the truss and j stands for number of pin or the hinge joints now based on this single equation we can determine whether the truss is a perfect truss that is statically determinate that is we can analyze and calculate the stresses the loads inside the member okay that truss is called as a perfect well balanced truss then if the truss is imperfect one then it is statically indeterminate that is we cannot determine the forces in the member by using the conventional methods okay and the truss will be called as imperfect when this equation will not be balanced by the truss that is if the equations lhs and rhs are not equal for a given truss then the truss will be called as imperfect truss and we have subdivided that imperfect truss into two more uh, types that is deficient and redundant okay by the term itself deficient means something is lacking okay now when we say a truss is deficient one obviously a member will be less than the required one in order to make that truss a perfect one we will have to add something then it will become perfect truss otherwise it is called as a deficient something is lacking and the lacking thing the lacking parameter will be nothing but a member and when we say the truss is redundant the term redundant means excess or extra thereby the meaning that we can derive from the term redundant truss is that some extra member will be there okay additional member will be there therefore from this discussion itself if you want to quote if you want to state what a perfect truss or what an what an imperfect truss is we can directly use the equation m is equal to 2j minus r if lhs and rhs are same and the truss we will be ending up with will be a perfect truss if m equal to 2j minus r is not satisfied that is this operator cannot be used to equate left hand side and right hand side we will be calling it as imperfect truss okay that is m either it will be greater than or less than 2j minus 3 by that we will be looking into whether it is deficient one or redundant one okay let's go into detail of this thing let's try to use this equation m is equal to 2j minus r and we will try to find out whether the trusses that we will be having in the next part are perfect one or imperfect one see again let's see what a perfect truss is a pin jointed truss which has got sufficient number of members okay sufficient number of members to resist the load without undergoing any deformation in shape is called as perfect truss this is the definition and mathematically engineering mechanics point of view we have this equation m is equal to 2j minus r okay now we will be using this lhs and rhs in order to determine whether the truss is perfect or imperfect now see here example number one we are having a truss having three members and three joints okay the number of let's count the number of members member number one member number two and member number three okay three members are here then number of joints here we can see a pin joint 
another one second okay one two and this three okay don't look at what is the force that is acting on the truss or what are the types of support just look for the joints or pin okay this joints three joints and three member now let's try to use the equation m is equal to 2j minus r in lhs what we are having m is equal to 3 now let's say what rhs is in rhs if we use 2j minus r then joints are 3 okay 2 into 3 minus 3 okay therefore here we can see lhs is equal to rhs because with this value is going to be 3 therefore lhs rhs that's why this truss is called as a perfect truss what we have done here we counted what are the members what is the number of members here what are the joints what is the number of joints here use the simple equation m is equal to 2j minus r we will be having the answer whether the truss is a perfect or imperfect one now let's see here again number of members are five let's count the member number one two three four and five okay five members are here then let's try to count the number of joints joint number one joint number two joint number three and joint number four okay four joints are there now let's try to use the equation m is equal to 2j minus r or 2j minus 3 okay lhs that is number of member m is 5 rhs is 2j minus 3 2 joints are 4 minus 3 4 to the 8 minus 3 is 5 that's why lhs and rhs are equal therefore this truss is a perfect one okay now finally we are having this truss having seven members and five joints member number one two three four five six and seven members are there okay now let's try to count joint one two three four and five okay m is 7 and rhs is 2 into 5 minus 3 which gives us value 7 see here m and 2j minus r are same that's why this one is a perfect truss okay enough with the practice of perfect truss whatever three examples that we saw here are the examples of perfect truss okay i think it this practice is enough to determine whether the truss is perfect by calculating number of members and number of joints okay joints are nothing but where two members are connected or pinned or hinged together okay now let's see what imperfect truss is let's try to see whether the truss is redundant one that is it will be having extra member or a deficient one it will be lacking something and uh, by statement a truss which does not satisfies the equation m is equal to 2j minus r is called as an imperfect truss okay does not satisfy means this operator will not be usable either it is going to be m less than 2j minus r or m greater than 2j minus r okay now let's head on to the next subtopic which is imperfect deficient truss. okay m is equal to 2j minus r will not be satisfied and it will be more like m less than see here m less than 2j minus r lhs will always be less than the rhs it is called as deficient truss okay and uh, when we say that the truss is deficient the truss is unstable it will be lacking stability and it may fall down it may collapse it may get destroyed when it is loaded okay when it is put under some external force or let's say external load now let's try to put our equation m is equal to 2j minus r or 2j minus 3 here see here number of members are 8 let's try to count them 1 2 3 4 
फाइव सिक्स सेवन एंड एट ओके दिस इज ऑल राइट जॉइंट्स वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स ओके हियर एल एच एस ओके विच इज एम एम इज इक्वल टू एट नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट आर एच एस आर एच एस विल बी टू इंटू सिक्स माइनस थ्री विच गिवज अस वैल्यू नाइन ओके सिक्स टू जार ट्वेल्व माइनस थ्री नाइन नाउ हियर यू कैन सी एल एच एस इज लेस दैन आर एच एस ओके एल एच एस इज लेस दैन आर एच एस दैट्स वाई दिस ट्रस्ट इज कॉल्ड एज इम्परफेक्ट डेफिशियंट ट्रस्ट ओके डेफिशियंट ट्रस्ट द डेफिशियंसी इज ऑफ अ मेम्बर ओवर हियर अदरवाइज इट वुड हैव बीन परफेक्ट वन ओके If we would have one more member here, then the trust would be perfect one. Then now, in the given scenario, the trust is imperfect, deficient one. Now let's see whether a trust is imperfect, redundant one. So the definition says a trust which satisfies the relation M greater than two J minus R. Okay, redundancy of what a member. A trust which satisfies the equation or relation m, not equation, the relation it is, uh, it is not equation. The relation m greater than 2j minus r is called as a redundant trust. It is over rigid trust. Okay, the problem with imperfect redundant trust is that it cannot be completely analyzed by static equilibrium condition. Okay, what are the static equilibrium condition? Try to recall this. Summation f x equal to zero. Summation f y equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. These equations are not at all useful when we are going to analyze an imperfect trust, specifically this imperfect redundant trust. Okay. Therefore, the structure becomes indeterminate. We cannot determine. Means it is it cannot be determined. That's why it is called as indeterminate structure. Okay. And let's try to see why we are calling it as imperfect. Redundant trust. Let's count the number of members here. Okay, member number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. See here. Uh, notice here that the member is not pin jointed here. Okay, this this specific shape resembles or it is indicator of overlap. Okay. these are overlapping each other these are not joint joint over here okay there is no joint here the overlap has taken place 10 members are there joints are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay the given data is right therefore lhs lhs is m is equal to 10 what rhs is RHS is two into six minus three, which is nine. Here you can see LHS is less than. Sorry, LHS is greater than RHS. That's why this trust is called as imperfect redundant trust. Okay, the redundancy here. is caused by this extra member okay if the lhs would have been 9 then we would be ending up with rhs being 9 and it would be lhs equal to rhs the truss would have been a perfect truss and we could determine it by using the simple static equilibrium conditions that is fx fy and m equal to 0 the truss is imperfect redundant truss okay so this is discussion regarding the truss trusses perfection or imperfection okay the perfect one is the one which has which satisfies the equation m is equal to 2j minus r or m is equal to 2j minus 3 the imperfect one is where you cannot use the equal to sign in between lhs and rhs of the equation m is equal to 2j minus r so in next lecture we will be looking at what are the assumptions for perfect truss that is in order to analyze a truss we are assuming some data okay some basic four to five assumptions will be there see whenever we are assuming or whenever we are having assumptions in a concept when we are analyzing something the assumptions are nothing but plain lies 
okay assumptions are nothing but plain lies that we are considering for the given situation so that we can properly analyze we can start analysis of that problem okay assumptions may not be perfectly true okay assumptions may not be perfectly true but keeping some assumptions in some analysis make the process easy that's why when we make some assumptions like uh, loads will always act on joint the members will be perfectly slender and uh, straight all these are impractical thing in actual or practical scenario but for the sake of solving the problem we have to assume some points or parameters over there okay and same way when we are analyzing a truss we have to assume some data we have to assume some ideal conditions okay whenever the term ideal comes you get to know that this is not practically possible but for the sake of simplicity of analysis of the truss or let's say any scenario we are having some assumption okay in the next lecture we will be looking at the assumptions and then we will see the tension and con compression concept in the truss okay so that's it for today i will see you next one till then take care bye bye